and young stock, high worm burdens lead to reduced daily live weight gain. In adult cattle, high worm burdens will lead to poor condition, which will have a knock-on effect on fertility and milk yield. Worms can affect the guts, liver or lungs, and depending on the organ affected, will vary the clinical signs seen. So the clinical signs of a worm burden could vary from ill thrift, diarrhoea or coughing, or indeed sudden death. Some worm burdens will have no clinical signs, so it's important to know what's going on in your cattle. A build up of parasites in the summertime on the pasture can overwinter and infect cattle grazing the next spring. The eggs of gastrointestinal and other types of parasites can be found in the faeces. Therefore, by measuring the amount of eggs in the faeces, we can measure the amount of parasite inside the animal. In the case of lungworm, it's the larvae that we measure or count instead of the eggs. Eggs or larvae will only be present in the faeces if adult stages of the parasite are present in the animal. And it should be noted that immature stages of the parasites can also cause disease. So just because there's no eggs or larvae in the faeces does not mean that the animal's not infected. As cattle get older, they can develop immunity to some types of gastrointestinal worms. Therefore, young stock and their first grazing season are the ones to monitor closely. So the main reasons for performing faecal egg counts is to diagnose clinical disease, to provide an indication on how contaminated pasture is, to determine the infection in bottom in animals, and to determine if treatment is warranted or if it has been effective. You need four heaped dessert spoonfuls per animal. Take from at least three areas of the dung pat and mix well. Collect samples in lidded pots and eliminate air, otherwise eggs may hatch and not be counted. You need to label the pots with the animal ID, and if the samples are for routine monitoring, take 10 samples per management group to give you a representative sample of what's going on in that group. Take them to the lab on the same day, or if this isn't possible, store them overnight in the fridge. Make sure you take details of when the group was last dosed and what with. So you should end up with 10 samples in pots. Make sure you get all the air out the pots by scraping the top clean. Try to clean the outside of the pot so they're clean for the lab staff handling them and you can just pop them in a freezer bag and bring them to the lab. You should sample young stock every three to four weeks throughout the grazing period and then three to four weeks after housing. That extends to 12 weeks after housing in the case of fluke. If you're testing to see if anthelmintic treatment has been effective, you should test two weeks after using benzamidazoles macrocyclic lactones or flucocytes or seven to ten days after using levomycel. The lab will provide you with a worm egg count per gram of faeces. You should discuss this result with your vet to come up with a sustainable and strategic worming plan that could save you time, labour and overall money and improve productivity and the way of growth rates in your herd.